High quality compost is one of the most important elements on our permaculture site. We can sift it, mix it with a little sand and use it in our nursery to start out our veg and start out our uh, orchard trees. Uh, we can apply it directly to our, to our kitchen garden. We can put it around our orchard trees. And if we want to bring back the life on the broad acre of our farm, then we can apply it at a, at a rate of about a ton per acre. And that will um, stimulate the micro, microorganisms in that area. Combine that with a spraying of compost tea and we'll have amazing results in terms of the return of the soil food web. We want to watch, watch the temperature going up to about 65 degrees Celsius. At 65 degrees Celsius, then we want to turn the pile, get more air into it, and allow it to go through its process again. So if you don't have a compost thermometer, in general, you're going to wait about four days after you make the pile. And then every time you turn it after that, you're just going to wait every other day. So turn it on the fourth day, then turn it on the sixth day, turn it on the eighth day until it stops uh, producing heat. 65 degrees Celsius is about the temperature that when you put your hand in, you can leave it there for a while, but then it feels so hot that you feel you need to pull it back. If it burns you immediately, you're too hot. If you can leave your hand in there forever, uh, it's not hot enough. Um, as your compost pile stops producing heat, you know that it's basically finished. What we're looking for in high quality compost are a few um, telltale signs of, of an abundance of microbial life. We want um, a moist compost pile. We want uh, a dark color. We want a, we want a sweet smell in the compost pile. And we want a crumbly nature to it. So um, if we have all of those things in the, in the compost pile, it's almost, it's almost guaranteed that you have a high level of microbial activity because it's the microbes that create those conditions. To learn more about composting and the soil food web in general, I recommend uh, getting online and looking at the Soil Food Web Incorporated and also a book called Teeming with Microbes. For, from my perspective, it seems to be the best book that describes the soil food web in such a way that's accessible to the, to the average person, to the average gardener. Um, yeah, check it out.